Hey YouTubers, welcome back to another episode of Costume Cinema Graphico, a profile of cinematic costumes from some of my favorite series television and movies. For my second episode, I'll break down the costumes of Vanessa Ives from the Showtime series Penny Dreadful. There's an incredible amount of info to cover, but before I begin, I want to warn you about spoilers for the entire three seasons of Penny Dreadful. Penny Dreadful is a British-American horror drama television series created for Showtime and Sky by screenwriter John Logan. He is an Academy Award nominee for the feature films Gladiator and The Aviator and wrote the critically acclaimed James Bond film Skyfall. Logan's colleague Sam Mendes, the director of the James Bond feature film Skyfall and Spectre, acts as co-executive producer on Penny Dreadful. Logan created and penned the scripts for Penny Dreadful, saying in interviews that he had been thinking about the story and characters for more than 13 years. The series ended in June 2016 after just three seasons. Vanessa Ives, known as the Little Scorpion, is the female lead in the series Penny Dreadful. She is the lovely young ward and aide to Sir Malcolm in the search for his missing daughter Mina. Mina was Vanessa Ives' childhood friend. Vanessa Ives is played by stunning French actor Eva Green. Green is most famous for portraying femme fatale Bond girl Vesper Lind in the 2006 film Casino Royale, also featuring Daniel Craig in the James Bond origin story. Green earned a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actress in a Television Series with her portrayal of Vanessa Ives. The costumes for the series Penny Dreadful are created by Italian costume designer Gabriella Pescucci. Pescucci, seen here at the Cirelli Atelier in Rome, Italy, is a master at historical costume design. She won an Academy Award for Best Costume Design for The Age of Innocence, the 1993 film directed by Martin Scorsese, set in 19th century America. She also won two Primetime Emmy Awards in Outstanding Costume Design for another Showtime series, The Borgias. Like Penny Dreadful, the series met the chopping block just after three seasons. A selection of costumes are created by Cutters and Stitchers at the Torelli Atelier in Rome, Italy. The remaining costumes are created in the 4,000 square foot wardrobe department at Ardmore Studios in Ireland, just on the outskirts of Dublin, where the series is shot six months of the year. The series The Tudors was also shot in the same Irish studio. When asked what percentage were custom made, Pascucci said this in an interview. I cannot say the exact percentage, but where possible I use vintage clothes. In other cases, I use pieces of authentic embroidery, lace, or buttons that I found in the London vintage market, applying them on corsets or dresses made with new fabric. I also used vintage men's jackets, waistcoats, scarves, and hats when the actor's measurements and characters would permit. Costume supervisor Oliva Pizzetti, who previously worked with designer Pascucci on the Borgias, oversees a talented team of Italian cutters and sewers. In an interview with the Hollywood Foreign Press, she says that while the wardrobe department rents some of the Penny Dreadful costumes in Italy and England, the majority are custom made for the actors at the Ardmore Studio wardrobe. Her team created at least 300 to 400 original costumes, although she's lost track because duplicate costumes had to be made because of the numerous stunts and stage blood. Pizzetti adds that while a costume might take a week to fabricate, it sometimes has to be made four times when a character is killed. Their Italian suppliers export Finch's Indian saris, which designer Gabriella Pascucci will cut and take apart, redecorate and repurpose in various meticulous ways. Pescucci has stated in interviews that her costume designs were inspired by French and Impressionist painters of the time. You can see the depictions of everyday life by artist Gustave Caillebat in this 1877 painting, Rainy Day. Popular French Impressionist painter Pierre-Auguste Renoir captures late 19th century women's clothing in his two paintings. The first, at the concert on the left, is from 1880, and the one on the right, La Parisienne, it was completed in 1874. Here are two additional Renoir paintings from 1883 and 1878. 
Edgar Degas and Edouard Manet both captured the everyday Paris life in Degas' portrayal of fellow American Impressionist Mary Cassatt in 1880 and Manet's 1877 depiction in Skating, seen here on the right. As did Edouard Manet with In the Conservatory in 1879. Gabriella Pascucci has also stated in interviews that she studied Gustave Dory's illustrations of 19th century London, as seen here. There are many excellent examples of costumes from the late Victorian period that are exhibited in museums and in many private collections, for which Pascucci was possibly inspired in creating Vanessa Ives costumes, such as this late 19th century French gown. Two significant couturiers of the late 19th century for upscale households are French designer Emile Pingat, known for his gowns and capes, and his contemporary English haute couture designer Charles Frederick Worth, who founded the Paris fashion salon The House of Worth. Both designers had their fashions worn by highbrow ladies from Europe and America, The House of Worth dressing royalty and the famous actors of the day. On the left, we have a silk velvet walking gown from the House of Worth from 1858, and on the right, an American silk walking suit from 1898. Here I have two examples of French gowns from the late 19th century, both on exhibit from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. Both gowns were designed by Emile Pinguette. This grand blue gown from 1885 is made of silk and cotton. And this gown from 1889 is created from silk satin damask, silk plain chiffon, silk applique lace, and glass beads. And finally, here's an exquisite Italian gown from 1890 created from textured silk, bobbin lace, silk needlepoint, and beads. When describing her choice of color palette for the show's lead, Gabriella Pascucci says, Vanessa, Eva Green's character, is a young, tormented woman who doesn't like the superfluous, which women's fashions was full of in the 1890s. At that time, black was a widely used color and not only for mourning. The elegant physicality and the pale color of Eva's skin led me to choose dark colors for her. This is apparent from the beginning when we are first introduced to Vanessa in the show's debut, Nightwork. She wears a simple tailored black jacket with simple black piping, a black A-line skirt and an underblouse with black net and a lace jabot. Her accessories include simple drop earrings and a cap. We get a better impression of the blouse without the jacket and see that her skirt is topped with a satin waist belt seen here in the season one episode, What Death Can Join Together. Here is a close-up detail of the netting and the lace. Here are some actual turn-of-the-century vintage lace jabots, a popular fashion item for women of the time. Vanessa, she receives a visit from Nathan wearing this gorgeous black dotted silk blouse with black silver velvet ribbon, netting and guipure appliques. The delicate pink piping and black and pink lace add a youthful hint to an otherwise sober palette. In this episode too, called The Seance, Vanessa's no-nonsense look shows her femininity with this black and cream bobbin lace blouse. She appears at ease, wearing the blouse slightly unbuttoned. The blouse features some lovely details, velvet bows on the shoulders, jet buttons, and beaded floral appliques. The understated dotted silk skirt is finished off with a silk satin belt with embossed silver belt buckle. In season one, episode four, Vanessa's look is more austere in solid black. Her hair is pulled back more severely. She wears no jewelry and nothing to soften her face like the high Victorian collar or jabot as we've seen before. The sheer lace blouse is constructed with various bits of net and lace and offset with a pleated silk belt with a jet bead buckle and an A-line skirt, one of several black skirts that Vanessa cycles through throughout the seasons. You can see that Vanessa wears the same blouse with this hip-length twill coat in the season three episode, The Day Tennyson Died. Adding a shot of color to a otherwise dark palette, Vanessa wears this 
beautiful burgundy silk velvet bodice covered in black pure appliques in the season two episode, Verbis Diablo. The neck is filled with a delicate striped net and collar. Cuffs and belt are constructed from black silk satin. Her A-line skirt is constructed from black silk and trimmed with black tuxedo striping. We see Vanessa wearing the same top in episode six of season two. Silk Guipier was developed in the town of Le Puy, France, famous for their bobbin lace. Guipier is a French word used to describe lace that has gimp or thicker thread to outline the pattern in a technique that connects the motifs with bars or plates rather than net or mesh. On the left are two samples of vintage Le Puy Silk Guipier bobbin lace, and on the right, Maltese lace, all samples from the 19th century. Here's an example of vintage silk Chantilly bobbin lace from around 1870 that would be used as an overlay on skirt hems. Here are some contemporary examples of Guipure lace fabric. In this promo shot for season two, the episode Verbus Diablo, Vanessa wears this black Guipure lace, cream embroidered and bobbin lace bodice. She wears it with a dotted silk satin skirt and a black velvet belt. The fitted sleeves are capped with guipure lace overlay and the bodice and sleeves are heavily decorated with clusters of jet beads, dangly beads and velvet ribbon. The creamy collar and cuffs are decorated with clusters of small jet beads. In the season one episode of Resurrection, Vanessa wears one of her most memorable looks for the series. This stunning blouse is fabricated from black netting and completely covered with narrow silky cords or soutache. At this time in history, the technique would have been done by sewing machine, like it is in this case, but in the past, all this work would have been done by hand. Here's a much closer look at the detail. Vanessa, she repurposed the same skirt and pleated satin belt with jet buckle from episode four. Here are two examples of some Victorian silky cord appliques. These French appliques are hand sewn into these elaborate schoolwork designs and they were very popular at the time. And some samples of modern guipure lace trim. In the season two episode, Above the Vaulted Sky, Vanessa's seen here having tea with Victor and his creation creature, Lily. She's wearing a pretty cream satin silk blouse and uh, with an embroidered silk bib and cuffs. A pretty gold and purple ribbon is softly tied at her neck. In the left picture here, you can see the smocking or gathers at the back. And this is a technique which tapers the blouse at the waist. And on the right, we get a glimpse of Vanessa's cap constructed from assorted ribbons and trim. Vanessa's seen here wearing this look again in the episode Glorious Horrors from season two, seen here with Victor and Dorian in Above the Fault of Sky with the creature John Clare, and once more in episode two of season three. Note the same coat as well from seasons one and two. In the latter part of the season one debut night work, Vanessa wears a sensible walking ensemble consisting of a black silk blouse and a box pleated window pane woolen skirt with narrow black velvet trim in the seams. The front panel of the skirt is cut on the bias. This coat is constructed in a similar fashion to the majority of her coats throughout this three seasons. Each is hourglass shaped. It usually is mid length or longer and it has a center front opening with double darts in the front and arm side princess seams in the back. The upper sleeves are always gathered and slightly puffed, although not as large as some of the Lego mutton styles from the period. And it's tapered at the waist. With a notched stand up collar, wide lapels and pointed hem, this particular coat is constructed from a textured burgundy silk. It's fastened at the front with black silk cord frogs and embellished with silk cord details on the cuffs and at the center waist back. Here's a sample of some Victorian frog closures on the left and a braid applique on the right that were very popular in that era. The high neck collar of the under blouse is trimmed in burgundy silk cord. For the season two opener, Fresh Hell, Vanessa adds this gray silk brocade overcoat to an existing ensemble. 
The coat features gathered upper sleeves that taper into a point and a stand up a notch collar. The large collar lapels and cuffs are faced with silk velvet and trimmed in black velvet ribbon. The coat closes at the center front with large black buttons and braid and it's a prettier alternative option to toggles. While the sleeves are more Lego button on this coat, this 1980s House of Doucette silk evening jacket has a similar cut to many of Vanessa's coats. Here we find another overcoat cut in a similar way. This coat it's made of velvet and it has a stand-up collar, features slightly puffed and then tapered sleeves and has similar braid and button closures. This simple and yet elegant outerwear piece is the standard silhouette for Vanessa throughout the three seasons. In the season one episode, Demi Mond, seen here with Dorian Gray, Vanessa wears this blue texture silk coat. Like all of her coats, this one has functional slant broad welt pockets. The coat features a black fur collar with a soutache overlay and has small black opal style buttons at the center front closure and then smaller versions of the buttons on the cuffs. She wears a matching black lace and silk flower cap here too. You can see a close-up of the soutache decoration. And we see Vanessa sporting the same look again uh, while she's shopping with Victor in episode two, Evil Spirits in Heavenly Places. In this season one episode, Vanessa's coat lapel and cuffs are trimmed in the same style of soutache braid. I have two examples of soutache braiding on late Victorian garments shown here. As you can see on both the left and the right, the decoration can take the garments from simple to exquisite. Here are two Victorian soutache appliques. They're little forms of artwork unto themselves. In the season two finale, and they were enemies, Vanessa wears this purple velvet and black silk high neck blouse with little black buttons. For the season finale, she adds this bluish purple brocade tapestry coat with a turn back collar and contrasting cuffs, cut like all of her other outerwear coats. The collar and cuffs are piped and trimmed with burgundy satin cord. Here's a bit of a new look for Vanessa with Dr. Alexander Sweet on the season three episode, Good and Evil Braided Bee. This mid-length jacket is constructed from a silk twill fabric and it's cut with shoulder princess seams with black piping and a partially stand-up notch collar. Her hair here is softer too and it reflects a more contemporary look but also expressing her changing heart. The sleeves are slightly puffed up her sleeves. She wears it here with a repurposed black skirt that we've seen uh, in seasons two and one. With a softer color of coat and hairstyle, as seen here, it's clear that in the season three episode, No Be So Fierce When She Meets Ferdinand Lyle, that Vanessa is in love. The coat is in stark contrast to the burgundy striped skirt. The front panel of the skirt is cut and sewn in a chevron pattern, while the side panels are cut on the straight grain with the addition of soft ruffles near the bottom. The soft rose colored antique satin double breasted coat is lined in burgundy and offset by the burgundy cord trim on the collar and cuffs. This ends part one of this episode on the costumes of Vanessa Ives. Be sure to check out part two. And if you have something you'd like to add to the conversation, feel free to leave a comment below. Thank you for watching. And if you like what you see, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.